Every email message before you send it off has its own tracking and delivery options that you can set. For example, I want to send this email message off to Carrie wishing her a happy birthday. Before I click on the send button, let's see what options we get by coming over here to the tags group and clicking on its expandable dialog box button. And there you go, voting and tracking options and delivery. Now we already went over the voting in an earlier training video, so you can watch that, and we won't cover it here. And then down below, you can request a delivery receipt for this message, meaning that when you check that, it only works when you're connected to the Exchange server, that as soon as it delivers it to Carrie's inbox, it'll send a message to me saying that the message has been delivered. And then below that, you can request a read receipt. So when Carrie gets the message and she double clicks to open it up, it'll prompt her asking her if she wants to send me a read receipt. If she says yes, it'll send that receipt back to me saying she read it at this time. Well, technically she didn't read it. She just said, go ahead and send a read receipt, meaning that she actually opened it because after she said yes, she could have closed right out of it and not have read any of it. In any case, keep that in mind. And then down below, we've got the delivery options like have reply sent to. Now, the default, when you check it, is going to put your name in it. So if you don't check it, it's still going to have the reply sent to you. But if you want the reply sent to somebody else because maybe you're not handling this anymore, you can delete your name and type in other email addresses, or you can leave your name there and add additional emails to it. And of course, use the delimiter semicolon to separate those email addresses. You can do it that way, or if they're in your global address list or your personal contacts folder, go ahead and click on Select Names. And well, if they're listed there, great. You can click on the drop down arrow and go to the global address list or your contacts folder. I only have one, but if you add more, you'd select them and click on reply to, click OK. It would add their name or names if you wanted more to be included in those replies. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck it and leaving it unchecked, the default will have them sent back to me. And then we'll cover this in just a second. Down below by default, it'll save a copy of the sent message in my sent items folder. If I uncheck it and I send this off, and I'm like, okay, I can't remember if I sent Carrie a happy birthday email. Oh, fudge. Let me go ahead and check the sent items folder. Because remember, by default, every time you send a message off, reply, a forward, any type, it saves a copy of it in the sent items folder. If I uncheck this and I check the folder, and I'm like, okay, I don't see anywhere a copy of that message that I actually sent her wishing her a happy birthday. Oh, man, I better hurry and send her a happy birthday. So when I actually center one, if I'm going off of memory, I'm not going to get any help here by unchecking this because it won't save a copy of it in my sent items folder. So she'll get a second happy birthday email message until my memory kicks in and says, oh, you already sent it, you just didn't save a copy of it in the sent items folder. So that's up to you. If you want a copy, maybe you don't want to be tracked, so you can go ahead and uncheck that. And then down below the contacts, click on that to go ahead from the contacts folder, add any contacts that you want, and this is just tied to you. It doesn't go with the message. So when you send the message, you can add contacts to that message that will be tied to it. You can check that in the sent items, or you can tie a category to it as well. Click on the drop down arrow. Ooh, ghost investigations. I know it's happy birthday. Maybe we need to click on the drop down arrow and go to all categories and then change it and say for happy events. In any case, there you go. And then back up here, do not deliver before. Let me check that. So let's say her birthday is on, well, let's go over here, at the end of the month, April 30th. And I want to be able to have this delivered on time. So that way I've got everything prepared, the email message. And I don't want to send it early because her birthday is until April the 30th. And I don't want to send it late in the afternoon. So let's do 8 a.m. Nice. And oh, we can go ahead and do 6 a.m. Like we're really on it. So what's going to happen is when that date and time comes, if I have my Outlook program open at that time, it'll send it off. But if for some reason I don't have it open, like let's say a month later, I come back from some long vacation and I open it up like May 30th, the moment I open it up, Outlook's going to look at this date and go, oh my, it's like a month later. It's past April 30th at 6 a.m. Let me go ahead and send it off. Zing, and away it goes. In which case, it's a belated birthday, but oh well, keep that in mind. You have to have Outlook open in order for it to automatically send it off for you. So if you're concerned about other people accessing your programs, well, leave Outlook open. Just lock your computer down. So that way, when it comes to that date and time, it'll send it off. And from their point of view, you were up at 6 a.m. They won't know. And then down below expires after. 
So let's say it expires on her birthday. So let's go ahead and go to April 30th and let's do it at 11.59 p.m. What that does is that if she opens the email message, then it'll put a line through it once it goes past this time. But if she doesn't open the email message and it goes to midnight, May 1st, it'll actually delete the message from her inbox and it's like she never knew she had it. Unless she saw it, she just never opened it up and then she'd go, hey, what happened to this message? Well, because I put an expiration on it after a date, if she didn't open it up, it will self-destruct and be deleted. And so that can be used for other things, like if you're selling something, you're saying, hey, we got the sale here, it's going to expire at this date and time, so when they get the message for hush puppies, that's going to expire at this date and time, that's going to expire on April 30th, let's say, that when they open this May 1st, they see a line through it, they'll know, okay, the sale's no longer there. And you could probably have a message in there saying, hey, this expires on April the 30th. So obviously if they're not watching the training video and they don't know anything about the expiration and why their email message has a line through it after they opened it and it went past the expiration date, well, maybe you can educate them or, hey, go ahead and have them watch my training video. Let's go ahead and close out and it saves it. There's no save button. So if you come back up here, click on the expandable dialog box button, it remembers everything. Close out. Let's go ahead and click send and then wait for our inbox here because remember I requested a delivery receipt so the moment it delivers it to Carrie's inbox I'll get a kickback a message that says that the message has been delivered again it only works for the delivery receipt if you're connected to a Microsoft Exchange server now I'm sitting here waiting going why am I not getting a delivery receipt the reason being is because it's sitting in my outbox now why is it sitting in my outbox do you remember because it's not supposed to deliver it before April 30th. Oh boy. You see, you didn't catch me on that, did you? So go ahead and double click to open it up, which brings up a good point. If you want to change any of this at any point and it hasn't been sent off, then go ahead and expand the tags group. You can uncheck do not deliver before and then close out and then click send and zing, away it goes. So let's go back to our inbox and wait for that delivery receipt to come in. There you go, that was fast. And you can see that little arrow pointing in. It's gotten to its point of destination. Happy birthday, your message has been delivered to the following recipients. Double click to open it up to get more details. It's Carrie. Subject, happy birthday. Great. Now let's go ahead and have her open up her email message and get that option to go ahead and say that she does want to send me a read receipt. And you get the option to not ask about these settings again. You can check that, and so if somebody keeps bugging you to send her a read receipt, you can check that and never be notified again. In any case, if she went ahead and said no, I wouldn't get any message that she actually read it. But we'll have her say yes so we can see what it looks like on our end. And to speed things up, let me go ahead and click send and receive here. Oh, there we go. Okay, took a little bit. And you can see the difference between that icon and this one. This one was an arrow pointing that it got delivered. This one is a check mark saying, hey, everything's good. In what sense? Your message. It was read. Go ahead and double click to open it up. Your message sent on that date and time was read on at this date and time. Fabulous. Let's go ahead and close out. Okay, let's go ahead and delete these. And then have Carrie send us an email message so I can go over the expiration date here with you. Okay, got an email message from Carrie. Hey, Kurt. Well, let's go ahead and double click to open it up. If you and your family drop by the office real soon, we have homemade apple pie for everyone. Now, when I come up here to the tags group and click its expandable dialog box button, you can see below it expires. Oh, wow. Look at the time down below. Today in just one minute. Let's go ahead and close out. Close out of here. So because I opened it up and read it, it's not going to delete it from my inbox. So instead, when it goes past due, past when it expires at 7.53, it'll put a line through it to indicate, well, if you watch this training video, that this apple pie invitation has expired real soon. Well, that's super soon. It's past due. You can see down below it's 7.54. And so if it's not putting a line through it, we need to refresh it. So let's just go ahead and go to another folder like the deleted items then come back to our inbox. And there you go. There's a line through it. It's expired. Line through the from subject that whole line there, double click to open it up. This message expired on Thursday, March 15th, 2018, 753. No more apple pie, oh that's sad. Let's go ahead and close out and let's 
delete that and have Carrie send us another email message so we can find out what it looks like to have a read receipt attached to it. So she sent it. When I double click on it, there you go. Carrie Heffernan requested a read receipt be sent when message apple pie is read. Do you want to send a read receipt? Now this is a one-time shot, so if I go ahead and say yes, it'll send it off to her. If I say no, then she'll never know. Let me go ahead and, well, you can see it opened it up for me and it said no. Let me have her resend it again, and only this time I want to show you something that's interesting that I think you ought to be aware of. Okay, so we'll delete this one, and she sent me the same message again with the read receipt. And there we go. So instead of double-clicking on it, what you can do is you can click and drag it over to the side, and if I click and drag that message to my desktop and I double-click on it, I don't get that read receipt prompt. So I can close out. Go ahead and restore my Outlook, double click on it, then I get the read receipt. So you're probably asking yourself, well, how does that work? How do I know before I actually double click on it? Because I get that one time shot to read it before I actually read it, and then go ahead, maybe several days later, open it up and say, yes, I read it, with a quick reply that I had that time to ponder and think about it and quickly type in a response. I mean, okay, that's not being honest, but nonetheless, I want to show you because I thought it was interesting. So the way that you work around it, you can hold down the keys, control, alt, delete, as I'm going to do here. And I'm going to go to the Start Task Manager. And I'm going to go to my Outlook program and end the task. And end it now. And it closes out of Outlook. So I'm not caught up here by saying no or yes just to get rid of that box. But now that I know that it's a read receipt and I closed out of it by using the control, alt, delete keys. And in that Task Manager, ending that program. When I reopen Outlook, well, to the Exchange, because that's where I was at, and I double-click, see, it pulls up. So that way, I'm not stuck and going, oh, great, I have no way to get around this because I want to have time to read about it for whatever reason. Again, hey, we're trying to be honest here, but I thought it was interesting. Even though you've read it several days earlier, and then go ahead and click on Reply, and then type in a message that you probably already have set up in Microsoft Word and copy and paste it over into the body of the message after you hit reply. Let's do it here and then send it off. And so that would look really super weird if somebody sent you something that would take at least a couple of days to work on. And after a couple of days, they got a read receipt saying you just barely read it and you copied and pasted all the text in here that you were working on the past couple of days and send it off like, wow, that was done instantly. It could be an April Fool's joke, but in any case, I thought that was interesting and wanted to bring that to your attention. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.